Hello everybody, thanks for joining me. I'm AJ of Everything AJ. Today I actually want to show you a little more on my process of how I tie and string my sun catchers. So what I'm talking about, here's an example of it right here. I've got beaded sun catchers and I do make these exclusively because I strand the design as a one-of-a-kind design. I don't repeat the pattern and therefore it makes my sun catchers kind of like here's the one that's specially made for you so to speak. Um, anyways, the process I'm talking about today is how I actually tie the loop to the end of the strand and how I tie and attach my sun catcher crystal ball. So that's a really important process because as you know, if these things get caught or if um, for some reason a curtain or a drape, uh, the blinds come down too hard on it, you really wanna make sure that this is tied appropriately because the last thing I wanna do is have the strand of beads just go flying everywhere because that's horrible. You would probably not be able to find them all and then you can't really repair and put it together. Okay, so anyways, let's get into this process. I just wanna kind of show you what I've got there. So here I have a design that's all laid out. I've got, um, I picked some of these copper beads that are really shiny and pretty, and also some turquoise beads. So I'm gonna straighten that up. And then I also have my little charm that I'm gonna add to the design as well. And I'll do that at the very end. Okay, so basically um, the fishing knot process is a lot like what I'm going to be doing here for the sun catchers. So that's kind of why I was making a little uh, fun of how, you know, these aren't just your husband's knots anymore because technically in crafting and a lot of other processes, threading, uh, sewing, we probably use very similar knots in this as well. So that's why I want to show you and that's kind of why I also added the fishing. Now also to talk about fishing however is this. So when you've got the opportunity to put all of your things in an organized case, something that closes, locks up, nothing can get you know individually messed up unless maybe they were seed beads or really small crafting project stuff, um, it all pretty much stays into place. I do have where these uh, little dividers here uh, can be glued down. Um, they do fit pretty tight, so I haven't glued any, but just kind of as a side note, if you are using a lot of the fishing stuff as you're crafting, I do highly agree with that and suggest it um, because you can really put all your stuff in that little compartment, carry it to go with you to a show, um, a lot of different uses. And, and I've organized it separately based on like beach, wine, pets, just a lot of different stuff. So anyways, that's it with the fishing talk. I will get to the beading process and start showing you how to tie these beautiful knots. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna put the camera a little bit closer, obviously, so you can totally see the process. Okay, so let's get right into this process. I've got my fishing line here. Um, the fishing line that I use is a 17 pound test all right, here's my crystal. This is a 30 millimeter crystal ball. This is a Swarovski Aurora Borealis. This is the only kind of crystal ball that I actually use for my sun catchers. I absolutely love this crystal ball. It is, it's just stunning. Okay, so I've got my crystal ball here. First, I wanna tie my first knot. It's just a basic knot, just gets everything kind of planted to where um, it'll stay put once I do my second process. So now what I'm gonna do is I have my loose end is here and my connected end, because I haven't cut my line yet, is um, in this hand here. So I'm going to hold this line up. I'm gonna bring this line up over my finger and I'm gonna actually down, like take this line back down the main one that's not cut and I'm gonna go around it three times. Okay, so you got where I've obviously gone around it three times, maybe more, and then I just start to pull down. And what this is gonna do is it creates a knot that bunches all of those twists around down to the bottom to where the actual line comes out at the base of those twists. So I've got all of the twists above where the end of the line is coming out. I hope that makes sense. Um, so I can even do it again. So take it up, go around 
one, two, three. Okay. It's it's tough to hold on to these ends. And that's probably the one big trick is that you just don't want to have it come undone. But do it again, pull tight. You can take your fingernail and push down on that as you pull. You can see I'm pulling tight. The tips of my fingers kind of turn in color because they show the pressure on there. You just want to make sure that that knot gets in there. So then what I'm gonna do, scissors, actually cut that line down pretty good. Oh, started to loosen up, so I make sure I tighten that back down. I do use my teeth, yes. <laughs> and then take my crafting lighter, burn it down a little bit to get that end, and then take the metal tip of it just to kind of put a little nub on that line, and that's staying put, that ain't going anywhere. Okay, so now what I'm ready to do is start beading up and finishing the rest of the beading. I'll cut this side of the line, Put my first bead on, which is my flute bead. And what's nice is that caps that knot so you don't even see it. This gives you what I say is a completed look. Okay, so I'm just gonna probably speed up the video process because beading is self-explanatory. Um, and then I will show you at the very end, obviously, the knot process again and the finished pattern. Okay, so now I'm going to put the tip on. This piece right here. So I tie my first knot again. And what I have learned is if you have a hard time getting the knot really close into there, you use these round tipped hand held um, pliers and then just lightly kind of put some pressure to twist that line up. And then once you let go, you're basically right on top of the fishing line. So see, there's no room there to, for it to move around. That way, when I put the charm on here, it hangs straight. It doesn't hang downward. It leaves for a really nice look. Okay, so we're going to do the final knot now again. So here I've got my end, obviously, and I have the line that's attached. So we're going to come around it three times. No. Sheesh. Struggle's real tonight. <laughs> okay. So three times around, I've got a huge loop there. All right. I'm going to hold on to this one side, kind of, let's pull it a little bit smaller, get it on the correct side. I don't want to have it be underneath. I want it to be right on the top. And then before I get too small, put my pliers up there again. And I'm pulling with this hand here. And now I'm going to twist with this hand here just to bring that knot pressure in that much more. Okay. And voila, there we have it. We're sitting right on top of that clasp. Cut the line. Okay. I go a little bit closer. Perfect. Okay, so right there is the knot. It's right in between 
the middle clasp here. So what I'm gonna do is take my pliers and pinch that, and that's gonna close right on top of the knot and keep it all secured inside of it. And it's a squirrely little bugger. <laughs> so I just take my time and do a little bit of pressure at a time. All right, there's that. And then I take this one and I just finish off the curling of the end here. I do it super tight so they have just as much as possible curling up. Okay, so. Then I have my loop that I put on the top. Spin that in and we are all good to go. And that is that. So now I want to attach my charm. So I'm going to test the clasp, grab that, I always put my charm on first so that being that I'm right-handed, I put this on appropriately so that my right hand can use the clasp. Obviously, if, if the person's left-handed, they can change it, or I can just apologize for the fact that I put it that way because I'm right-handed. <laughs> okay. Make sure that is completely straight. And then there's my charm. So I will open this, attach it. Oh, missed it. And there we have it. So that's the whole process of how I tie the knot. I hope that it was better seen. Um, I did slow down the process a little bit more and try to focus on that. I definitely think that this is the tightest and best knot that you can possibly do. And again, you know, I learned it from the fishing knot process. So if you do need more information, you can find pictures of it as well as video. So whatever it is that fits your fancy on how you learn how to do the process, just do it. <laughs> Okay, I hope you really enjoyed this video, you guys. Thanks for tuning in again. Um, I'm AJ of Everything AJ's, and this is my beautiful beaded sun catchers. You can find them on Everything AJ's on Etsy. And um, don't forget that I also appreciate if you subscribe and like my videos. All right, hope we see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Thank you.